Hello everyone, and welcome to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, we're mainly conducting our extant missions, namely the two missions to the moon, one to an asteroid that is passing by, and finally one to Minmus. So, lots to do this time, and things are already underway, so let's uh, pick it up with our leading... Ooh, I like this. So uh, we can actually see the encounter now. I used to have to switch to them and try and figure out how long they have to get there. But uh, this one is encountering in 6 hours and 52. Ah, uh, this one's in 6 hours 42. I would have thought that this one was the lead one, but in fact, it's this one that's going to hit it first. And it's periapsis 8 hours 10 minutes. This one, 8 hours 20 minutes. Okay, so we're going to the Moon Science Junior 2 to start things off. And here it is. Sort of looks like an insect when you have it lit like this. But, uh... Yeah, there we go. Alright, uh, there's uh, no... no fanfare necessary. We can just bring it into the Moon Sphere of Influence and then again to orbit. Um, yeah, we don't have to worry about the other one until it gets to periapsis either. So as long as we do the burn quickly enough, it should be alright. Okay, Moon Sphere of Influence, and we know that the periapsis for this one comes first anyway, so we'll just bring it into the periapsis. Let me just plot it first. And once we get them both into orbit, we'll work on getting them to the surface. Okay, let's start this. Okay, that's fine. 50 by 70. Let's go to the other one. Now, this one does not have lights, I believe. Indeed. So... We're just gonna have to deal with that. No, no, don't set the other one as a target. That'll be fine. Well done. Okay, our other missions seem to be still underway. Hmm. Yeah, I think we have plenty of time to do uh, the landings. This one's more difficult because it's dark. Let's see. Um, no, this one's already in the right position to plot for landing here, so I'm going to switch to it. Okay, now, planning for landing. Where should we land? I think this crater is good. Looks like we haven't hit it with anything before. Okay, that's too much. Let's give it a little bit more. I want to practice doing a decent landing for once. So, we'll go like this. Although, so that might be a decent landing on the moon, the real moon. Uh, don't know if it works so well on a, a small size moon. We'll see. I should have made note how long these stages are. Right, so we'll just do this one first. And we should be down within 25 minutes. Sounds good to me. Oh, wow. Well, we're on the dark side and we've got lights on, so we're depleting electric charge. So now the reason I wanted to know the stage time is how long I have to finish this burn, right? Because really it's about the time it takes for this, this stage to burn out. This is the return stage up here. Though I forget if I got that right. I might need some of this stage to do the return as well. Alright, there's our target crater. And we're still in a bad view, so let me just go to camera free. 
and we'll start this. Don't need to go quite so fast. It's a little bit more complicated since we have to ditch this stage. I guess we gotta land over here somewhere. Let's get the landing gear out. For some reason this seems to be my typical mode to have uh, this descent stage like this. I'm actually trying to avoid the crater there, so... Hold on a sec. Oh, I guess we could... Maybe we could land in this one, huh? Alright, let's try and land in the middle of this one. Instead of, uh... Instead of skipping over it. I mean, the issue is always with the edge, right? I didn't want to hit the edge. And so this flat area would be better, but it looks like we're going to be hitting in the middle of it, so that's fine. I'll go for that. Okay, well we're overdue for this. I'm taking a look to see where it impacts, so I know my altitude. We don't have IVA view in this, so I can't get my altitude any other way. Okay, we are, so we're looking at 1,600 meters for a touchdown altitude. So we can actually stop that for a sec. Okay, that's our first probe on the moon. Okay, let's uh, do its thing. Yeah, all, all it has is Science Junior, really. Uh, it's got some other experiments, but we're going to keep this data because we're intending to bring it back. Note the parachutes at the top. Log temperature. All right, that's pretty impressive. Uh, I, I don't uh, have any hope for that. Um, otherwise, it's just another thermometer and barometer, so nothing there. Okay, it's done its thing, and let's get back into orbit before continuing. Yep, okay. Gear up. Couldn't really plant a flag though, so we can't, uh, we won't uh, remember where we did the Science Junior, so that's a little bit of a problem. Okay, I have some sense of relief that we got that done, but we've got a lot left to do and this still has to come back home. Let's go to Science Junior 1, really, and uh, see if we can do the same thing. Now, unfortunately, the one headed to the asteroid, I don't think we'll be able to do any science around it. Uh, remember, its job is to bring it into orbit around Kerbin, and then we can send the Kerbal out to do science for it. But uh, I think the only science is to take a surface sample, if I've uh, heard correctly from other commentators. Well, let's... Let's see now. Oh, well, let's not hit a crater, I guess will be the thing. If we hit... Uh, I, is this the one that we did? I can't even tell now. I assume so. Our science junior is headed up. Mm, yeah, probably. 
trying this one is uh, pointless. It's too dark. So, and we don't have lights on this. I think we should try and just, uh, how about here? Right around here-ish would be good. Actually, this spot here looks tempting. Okay. Okay, that should be fine. Looks like we need to go a little bit further south. Okay, that flag is actually on the other side of the planet, so let's not get fooled by that. Oh, let's reorient retrograde. I'm sure we don't need to do a thermometer reading here, but since we've got two on each of these, I might as well try. Yeah. So we can do this a little bit later than I did even the last one, but I have to make sure I don't overshoot the location. Okay. Let's, uh, let's get cracking. Nope, even here it's it's uh too early. Too early. Well no maybe not. I thought our apoapsis was catching up with us too fast, but it isn't. What's our altitude? Uh pretty safe. And that's the one on the other side of the globe. Okay. So there's our chosen spot. Guess I'll get the gear down now. I'm cutting speed periodically because because I'm not entirely sure how high the terrain is. Just trying to get a good look at it. I think I should probably dump the stage here. Looks a little bit higher than it was uh, in the crater. Should be. Yeah, 4,000 meters here. Okay. All right. Uh, not the shadow isn't quite uh, quite right here. Maybe if I turn SAS off. Aha. Oh, don't tip over now. Okay. Wow, SAS was holding it like that. Okay. I didn't know it could do that. Alright, observe. And uh, the fine dust of the moon has intermixed with some of the samples. You have a sneaking suspicion that they'll n never be able to get the lad clean again. Okay. Keep that data. Perhaps it's not quite safe to bring all this back then, but let's uh, log to temperature. Keep that data. Uh, I'm not even going to bother with the barometer. And, alright, looks like we're uh, set to leave. Up we go. Oh, no, 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 SAS. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, what the? Hey, 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 hey. I was just got done saying how impressive you were. What the heck happened there? Even without SAS, it shouldn't spin out like that. Um, okay. Uh, this way. 
Okay, yes. This is this is glitchy as heck. It shouldn't be doing this. There's something wrong here. Well, uh all right, we've got SAS on. Do you think it works or not? What the heck is up? Why is why does it seem like there's no gravity? I mean, we saw the moon accelerating us to the surface, so there is gravity. I mean, if you, why would there not be gravity? But okay, all right. Well, this time it works. I don't know what all that was about. Sorry about that, folks. And uh, what was supposed to be a uh, clean and professional set of missions we've decided to do something crazy I don't know why but uh, it looks like all our stuff is intact we've got the thermometer reading and the materials bay reading lost solar panel but uh, we should be thankful to get away with just that I think I don't know Whew, it's random spinning Okay, coasting to apoapsis at this point. So we're gonna leave them in orbit around the moon for now and uh, conduct the rest of our missions before trying to get them back. Otherwise, I'd be afraid that I'd miss their return while uh, doing the other missions. They're safe as long as they're in orbit around the moon. Okay, well that's good enough orbit. I don't think we need to do anything more than that. Uh, and with no lights, we don't have to worry too much about the electric charge, I think, even though we lost this one of the extendable solar panels. This stage is almost out, so... I trust that our little tanks up here, the Troy little tanks, and these little... What are they? LV-1Rs can get us back home. Okay, I think the next one... Well, let's just go to the tracking station and see what the next one will be. Okay, so it's just between the Minmus one and the AD3, and Minmus is coming in in one day, 20 hours. AD3 doesn't actually have any... I mean, it uh, doesn't show the encounter with the asteroid. So I think we need to jump to it. And here we are. Let's see... 21 hours, so definitely this one first. Alright, well, nothing for it. Uh, we just have to get in there. And so, time warping very carefully. 7.8 kilometers, not bad. I did a very good job with that. Very good job, but it's not gonna be any good if I overshoot or anything. So let's do this very carefully. We need have, we have a lot of delta v to burn with respect to the targets once we get there. Well, actually, well here it's not much. Yeah, actually, it's not too bad. It's because we're so far away from Kerbin, I think. Both of our orbits are fairly slow at this point. Okay, let's see what this is looking like. Well, we can't really see it. That's a good point. But let's perhaps orient to retrograde right now. This, this engine should be able to burn pretty quickly. I don't think we need to worry about how long the burn will be. Especially for only 407 meters per second. Okay, let's see if we can start seeing it out there. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Yeah, we could pretty much do it at right uh, when it's at its closest point to us, about 10 kilometers, let's say. 
yeah, let's start doing it here. Okay, burn to match target's uh, trajectory is a remarkable success, I think. So now, let's uh, well, let's get the grabbing unit open in preparation and yeah we need to head towards target we'll need all the mount propellant just to turn things uh, remember once we grab the grab the asteroid we might have to turn it around in order to get it pointed in the right direction for any burn and that will require a lot of patience and monitor balance so uh, we'll, we, we don't have even though it looks like we've got a lot of units of monitor balance that's not necessarily the case it might be that I really need more RCS ports than, than I've got just to n turn the asteroid around in fact, it almost certainly is the case that I need more RCS ports than I've got, but we're going to figure out exactly how much more I need. And from here on, I think it'll have to be RCS as we come in closer to the... And we got target center... Oh. Okay. Well, I hope that's right. Once again, we lose the distance indicator. I definitely think we should probably slow down with the... Come on, RCS. It looks like we should be pretty close to perpendicular. Uh, this part of the surface looks like it's oriented flat towards us, but it's very, very close. Okay, so if we get this, we'll be two for two for asteroid grabbing missions. Though, uh... So that doesn't say anything about our ability to actually manipulate the asteroid. Uh, our solar panels are really, really tight in here. Okay, but we got it. Alright, we have grabbed an asteroid. A very large asteroid. Oh no. We're 616 tons. I was not expecting it to be that much. Oh wow, 616 tons. The the launch vehicle mass wasn't even. I I, I don't know, but that's probably what three times the launch vehicle mass for this mission. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Well, let's let's. Can we can we at least plot? Uh, no. I need to be able to plot something. Hello. All the way out here, huh? Well, I guess periapsis is a fair time to do it. So, how much? That's a loose orbit. Okay, let's go with that. 89.5 meters per second. And the beautiful thing about this is it's pretty much... Uh, no, it's pretty much opposite the way we're going. It's not beautiful at all. Okay. But, at least we get into an orbit. Do we have enough juice for this? It is time to get out the calculator. 616 tons. My mass ratio is going to be pretty darn hilarious. Okay, so on this stage, we've got... You figure out how many tons it is by taking the liquid fuel and divide by 90. So you've got 2.91 tons there. The ISP of that rocket times 9.81 gives us 18. 18 meters per second of delta V. Next. 
Delta V 25. So we've got 43 altogether so far. Did we have anything on here? No. No, no, we did. We did. We've got these little guys. So we dump all this. So that's four, let's say five more tons. So we're down to 605. And we got one ton of fuel here. Five. So we've got about uh, 48 Delta V trying to push this rocket. And it's... Uh, it's gonna require a let's see if we can is there any way we could uh, use less than that just to get into orbit very wide orbit uh, 60s minimal and there's no point where we could use less to get into orbit What's its resulting trajectory after, let's say, let's say we do everything we can. Uh, well, that's not bad, 60. If we could figure out how to get 60 in, that'd be great. So let's say we do that much. It doesn't change it very much, does it? Hmm. Well, maybe we should send yet another one out. Uh, let's, yeah, let's use this one to slow it down just a little bit and maybe, no, there's no way. I mean, it's only 12 hours to Apsis. It takes about a day to get out here. Nah, I'm not, uh, sending another mission out, we wouldn't get here in time, even if we uh, slow it down by this much. Five days to escape. <sighs> okay, well, let's do what we can. First, I want to figure out whether we can turn it to a maneuver node. Should be an interesting uh, experiment. But yeah, this this is a bigger asteroid than we can chew, obviously. Now, where is the maneuver node? Um, well, we've got RCS on. Ooh, we're moving very very slowly probably in the wrong direction it's turning Okay, so actually this is fine. We've got enough RCS uh, power here to turn the asteroid to a maneuver node. RCS is not what we're going to need to to add. RCS is fine. That little grappling thing is very strong. <laughs> uh, look at my little uh, craft wiggle on this asteroid trying to push it around. So there's the question, either we're going to send another mission out here, in which case we should just try and slow it down now, or we wait to the maneuver node and slow it down there. Okay, now I have to try and kill my rotation here. I'm not going to use time warp, I want to see how much it takes. It doesn't take too much actually, when you look at it, we seem to have made a complete circle with this asteroid using only about 30 monopropellant. But let's readjust, get to the node marker. Okay, I think that's enough for me. So I did the time warp trick. And so the question is whether we do it so Let's see how much more it would take to get into orbit from burning where we are now. So we're going to get a minimal orbit. Okay, that's the minimal orbit if we burn at periapsis. And we lose it if we burn anywhere here. 
But it's not too far. Okay, it's about one one meter per second of delta V. No, even less than that. Well, it's not gonna come down to one meter per second, I don't think, so... So we'll do the burn here, and see if we can't send another mission up. Completely perpendicular to the plane of the system. Well, wow. Okay, uh, well that changes our maneuver a little bit. We just need to get to the retrograde vector. Well, for those who wondered why I carried a lot of mod propellant on the previous mission and why I did again here, now you're finding out. Let's turn the thing. Okay, let's go with this. Let's see if we can actually push it around properly or whether something will snap. Uh, let me try and get a little bit closer to the retrograde vector. No point wasting fuel. Uh, we've got some turning. We've got some turning. Okay, uh, stop that. Stop. Ooh, accordion. Oh, I guess, no, the target marker doesn't have any effect on... It doesn't indicate where the center mass is anymore, I don't think. I don't know. Okay, definitely need more RCS ports. Don't need more RCS... Uh, don't need more mod propellants, but the ports might help to stabilize us while we're doing this sort of burn. We've got one of the big... Uh, big SAS modules there, so we've got plenty of torque. Uh, of course, if we overloaded with torque, we could make this easier, but but the proper way to do it would be to put more RCS ports. Oh, my poor little rocket's uh, wiggling on this asteroid. This is definitely not the best way to do things. On the right side, as we burn mod propellant, we technically have a little bit more delta V, but uh, it's trivial because uh, the great amount of mass is the 600 tons of the asteroid, not the mass that we have in the vehicle. Okay, that is all the fuel in that stage. And we continue. We're drifting too much. And we're actually running out of mod propellant now. Keeping it stable seems to be a significant issue. Let me take a better look at what our craft is doing. Oh yeah, we can rename asteroid. That's big and bulky. Um, Hmm. Can't quite come up with a name. Well, I mean, we had the the convention of of naming the asteroids after scientists. I started with Newton, but uh, in honor of the mass of this asteroid, we need something that's mass. Well, something associated with mass. Okay, this is the Higgs asteroid. Alright, fair enough. It's Higgs. Because the most surprising... I wasn't surprised by the mass of the Newton asteroid, but I'm sure surprised by the mass of this one.
Ah, uh, we're drifting away, we're drifting away. Let's use the time warp trick, I'm, I'm desperate here. Running out of my propellant. So much for that claim that we had enough. Oh well. Now, even after we run out of my propellant, we still have the reaction wheel. Well, let's just try and burn slowly now. Maybe that'll work. Okay, I'm actually going to stop recording, and I'll come back to you once I've done as much as I think I can. Okay, here's an update. We've got the stage burned out, and... Okay, yeah, got to throttle down there. And 28.5 meters per second left to burn, so here's stage separation. And that's the end of our lights, too, by the way. Alright, so... And also our big reaction wheel. Darn it. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much reaction power we've got on this. I don't think we have, like, any at all. Uh, just a little tiny bit I can see. Sort of going there. The red light is dimming, of course, because that stage is growing ever more distant. Oh, no, we've got lights on this one. I think, uh, yeah, there's an illuminator there. Okay, and it's actually got back-facing ones too. Wow. Got a lot of lights on this thing. Alright, here we go again. But, yeah, I don't think this is going to be able to push... I mean, I, I don't have enough of a lifetime to wait for this thing to push uh, this asteroid. I'm not even gonna try and I mean Yeah, alright, 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 I'm done. Let's Let's well wow. Not bad, not bad, but not successful either. So here's the question, whether I send another mission up to here or whether I focus on the Minmus mission which is coming in pretty close to its target here right now. Um, hmm. I think we have to go for the science first. There will be other asteroids to nab and this one was a tough target. This one, I, we've definitely demonstrated that we could if uh, this was a little bit less massive and we or and or we had more more fuel actually not too much more uh, a slightly bigger rocket would have done it and this is a class D so there's only one level above it so if this had been a class C asteroid I think we would have been able to make it so we can take comfort in that and we need to get science we need to go for the science junior head to Minmus and actually I think at this time I need to well no let, let's get to Minmus and uh, then we'll do uh, then the next episode I'll do the science on Minmus and bring all the missions back uh, the ones from the moon and the Minmus one but let's get it into orbit around Minmus at least okay and here we are our Minmus mission and can we see Minmus no, it's, it's probably too small at this distance. Yeah, we're not even in its sphere of influence yet. 21 hours, oh well, yeah. It would be complicated to try and do that other asteroid stuff and do this. We are now in Minmus's sphere of influence. You can actually see the... Uh, anyway, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, this this is the a isn't yeah that's the asteroid. Why does it show it as an orbit? 
Or is... No, this is the asteroid. What is this? Why do I have 280? Oh, uh, one part was the... Huh. I'm trying to figure out which what's what here. Might be interesting to check up on that. Do you know how time warping sometimes changes how things are flying? We'll have to see. Okay, that looks like an orbit to me. Let's do this maneuver. Ooh, it's so wonderful to be able to turn stuff. Oh, there's Mimis. I wonder how I missed it. Oh, we've, we've uh, time warped into its sphere of influence. That's right. Okay, we should be close enough here. I guess it'd be reasonable to finish our science business here before ending the episode. Okay, it's going in this direction, so... Say I create a maneuver here to lift it up and get it into this basin. The flats, as they're called. And also, let's retro burn there. Oh, Mimis rotated. Hey, that's not fair. Okay, uh, we'll aim for these highlands then. Let's see, how do we do this? Oh, we're going in this direction, so... Okay, that should be fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and land here. Assuming, well, let, well, hold on, let's see how much it rotates first. Yep, should be alright. Let's get started on this. Okay, yeah, this this region right here. Can I get the gear down because it looks like we're going to be doing this quickly. Okay, so first I'm just going to focus on burning off horizontal velocity because, well, we're not that far away from the surface. And again, if you kill the vertical velocity, Minmus has a trouble with bringing you down and we don't want to wait forever for that let's see let's get rid of some more of the horizontal velocity okay, I'm getting ready to dump this stage Oh, we shouldn't have orbits, darn it. We need surface. Ah, that messed me up. On Mimis, that switches from orbit to surface a little bit later, well, a lot later than you would otherwise be used to, or at least I would be otherwise used to. Okay, now let's kill it and drop that stage. Okay, close enough.
Now let's see how far above the surface we are. Getting time up a little bit. Okay, 2,650. And we're actually going up now. Wow, more explosions. At least I'm hearing explosions. I, I don't know what that's all about. Very disconcerting when you hear explosions and you don't know what it is. Okay, well we're on the surface. Let me not turn SAS off this time, just in case. Okay, observe materials bay. All right, uh, from Mimesis Lowlands, not that low. While the material samples were processed, you began to turn your thoughts to how much a Mimesis looks like a mint dessert and have discovered that you are now hungry. It seems more more like something for a manned or kerbled mission. But anyway, 125 science. Keep the data. Log temperature. 40 points for that. Excellent, and of course barometer is completely useless. So, we've got our science, and in the next episode I'll endeavor to bring it all back and reap the rewards of our efforts, and we'll have to look into what other asteroids we might be able to target. Perhaps, uh, perhaps aim for something a little bit less ambitious than a Class D 600 ton asteroid, and I think we might have some success, but uh, yep. Yeah that I'll have to wait for the next episode. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.